Hello, Gene Schwimmer here and welcome back to my vlog or just welcome if this is your first time. But whether this is your first time or not, if you like this video or any of my other videos, do the thumbs up, okay? I, I know it's boilerplate. I do it in the front of almost every video, but I'm just starting out. Got to build an audience here. So thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So what can I say after that? Except it's very good to see you again. Except, uh, of course, I mean that metaphorically because I can't actually see you. I'm looking into the business end of a camera lens. But be that as it may, I'm happy to see you. So today, well, I'm kind of in a rush, so this may be a short video, which means usually the way these have been turning out is that it's going to turn into a long video. But the intent is for it to be a short video. I'm also going to do a little bit of show and tell here. So fasten your seat belts, especially if you're in one of those, I forgot the name of it, the uh, Boeing plane, the one that's crashed twice and uh, by the stock, by the way. Uh, oh, I am not qualified to give stock buying advice, but common wisdom is, which usually turns out to be right, is that when you have a good company in a temporarily bad situation that makes the stock go down, that's a good time to buy the stock and hang on to it if you're a long-term investor. Putting that out there, not qualified to give the advice, so follow my advice at your own risk. I want to talk today about income inequality that comes up so much uh, from our uh, friends on the left about this disparity between the income of the poorest people and the income of the richest people and the damage that it's supposed to be doing to our society. Let's we'll start out with just a little bit of math. When I say math, I mean elementary math. When I say elementary math, I mean first grade but maybe even kindergarten because even kindergartners should know this instinctively. But when you talk about an income gap, you're talking about the gap between the person on the lowest end and the person on the highest end. We have been getting richer as a society ever since the country was founded. So at the top of the scale, you're going to have somebody getting richer, richer, richer. Jeff Bezos, well, he was the richest man in the world. 80 billion dollars now he's getting divorced so he's at 40 billion I would assume I guess it depends if Washington is uh, that's where his residence is is that a community property state but the point is the top end keeps rising and rising and rising now the lower end I don't care how many people do how well but there's always going to be somebody who earns zero or close to it so there is always going to be at the bottom of the scale zero so just as a matter of just common sense the gap is going to get wider because people are going to keep getting richer at the top the top is going to keep rising and the bottom is always going to be zero so you're always going to have that gap but what i want to get into today is that they're barking up the wrong tree because when and this is again one of the advantages of having an older blogger instead of all these millennials who haven't lived very long and don't know much from experience because nothing against them they just haven't lived long enough to have any experience but luckily for you and i don't know if it's lucky for me because the more experience i have that means the fewer years i have left to get more experience but hopefully you can learn from my experience while I'm still around, which is why I'm making these vlogs. So, okay, the real culprit is inflation. Now, when I was younger, and if you adjust for inflation in those days, there was a very large gap between rich and poor, too, because the average wage was my first job working for my father in his fruit market. This was in the early 60s. I was being paid two dollars an hour and I had my own apartment and I had a car and I paid my way through college on two dollars an hour. I won't say I never had help from my parents a little bit but even then you're talking I don't know hundred dollars here and there along the way. That's because each dollar that I had bought more. What I want to do is I'm going to show this graphically uh, well bear with me while I dig this up here 
and I uh, bear with me uh, as I try to hold it still so you can see it and as I look at it and try to read it but uh, and I'm not just talking about the angle I'm talking about my own handwriting here I managed to find an article that had prices from 1915 and 2015 so that's, that's 100 years, and 2015 is only four years ago, so that's enough for our purposes today. So let's just go through these numbers here. Now, this first line is the average annual salary uh, adjusted for inflation. Now, what that means is 1915, the average annual salary was just $687. That's not adjusted for inflation. That's the base figure, so maybe this line isn't clear. But adjusted for inflation, that's $16,063 today, which today is a pittance. I mean, uh, maybe in some parts of the country you can live comfortably on that. But uh, now, well, even here you, you could because, well, in 1915, I don't think anybody paid any income tax in those days. That's the other thing in that income range. I'm going to talk about that in a future video, but this is only two years after the introduction of the income tax in 1913. It was basically a one or a two page form, and based on these dollars, it was at quite a high level that the income tax kicked in, which is why people favored it, because they said, well, why not? I'm never going to pay it. And boy, did they learn, or boy, did we learn. In 2015 dollars, that's 16063 Now, the average house cost, this is where it starts to get interesting. When we look at the average house cost, now the average house cost in 1915 was $3,200. The average house cost 100 years later in 2015 $177,000. And I can tell you uh, today in 2019 where I am in Germantown, Tennessee, it's, I can't, well I won't say you can't, but it's hard to find anything less than $300,000. It gets cheaper in other areas, but those areas aren't as hoity-toity and fashionable. The whole point though is this next line, the percentage of your income needed to buy a house. Now in 1915, it took four times, a little bit like four and a half times your, uh, the average income to buy a house. In 2015, it took 11 times. Okay, these are percentages, but you multiply it. It's 11 times the salary in 2015 dollars to buy a house. So you can see the difference right there. That's one reason why you're poorer. Because six hundred eighty-seven dollars, you could, you just translate that to well, we're going to talk about it when we get down here. Gasoline, fifteen cents a gallon. So uh, compared to two twenty-nine in two thousand fifteen, the point is you would make fewer dollars per year, but each of those dollars in earlier years would go much farther. When I was oh, I don't know, fifteen years old, maybe my dream was to make $10,000 a year. If I was making $10,000 a year in, say, 1965, 1967, I could live very, very well. I could have a traditional middle-class lifestyle. Now, that 16000 I believe that's below the, the poverty level. So now what the average income in 2019, I think it's a little over 60000 And then these multiples work out the same. Then you're talking about maybe four times your, your salary, maybe even a little less, to buy a house. But you see, that's where the inflation comes in, because now you have to try the average of 60000 but there are a lot more people that are making less than 60000 They may be making more than sixteen, but they're making less than sixty. So that's why you're poorer. That is inflation. Now I just put here, uh, I added gasoline, just for the heck of it, so 15 cents a gallon in 1915 and $2.29 a gallon in 2015. So the percentage of your income that you needed to buy a gallon of gas in 1915, 0.00468%. The percentage of this income of 16063 that you would need is 0.01425%. So you're doing better on gas. What I did was I 
created this little poverty factor here and all I did is I divided this into this and this into this. So you can see this poverty factor dividing this, the multiple of your salary that you would need in 2015 into the multiple of your salary you would need in 2015 based on this inflation adjustment. That's 23.7 times more. Now as I said you're doing better on gas is 3.09 but still inflation is making you poorer and that's why I say when people talk about income